So yes, to, to restart. So uh, my name is Xing. I'm from Google. Together with Shri, we're going to talk about many two topics today. Um, so quick agenda here. Um, so many two topics. The first one is how we actually came out with the idea how we can onboard the AC based OTS machine, off the shelf machine and system into the 48 volt uh, open rack. And then um, we're also going to give some updates on the 48 volt onboard power, power architecture. Uh, very quick look back onto uh, Google's journey in OCP. Uh, so as many of you may know that in 2016, that's three years ago, Google, it's the first time for Google to join OCP and then we made an announcement of the 48 volt power architecture. Um, and in 2017, we collaborated very closely with Facebook to release the OpenRack v2 version. And I know Steve is going to talk about v3 this afternoon. And um, last year, actually, we have Scott and Shri was here to talk about the flatbed and, and a, a very new power technology called uh, STC. Uh, I'm sure Sean already mentioned in, in the early uh, presentation. So for those who don't know flatbed, it's basically a a idea of, um, of onboarding a 12 volt system or, or the motherboard into, into, a, uh, into a chassis or a tray design and then made it fit in into open rack, right? Um, and Shri was actually uh, pr presenting a, a 48 volt to point of load power, power solution. So this year we actually take a, a further step, right? So instead of uh, integrating the motherboard, you know, the board into the, the rack, we, we, are, we come out with the idea of how we can actually integrate the, the whole system, right? The, the whole tray, the whole chassis into the rack. Um, and lastly, we also made some good progress on continue uh, to develop the 48 volt uh, power system, right? So we, we are going to share some updates here. Um, you know, what is the efficiency and, and, and what, what the progress we, we made. So jump to the first topic here uh, to start with, right? So what I'm showing here on the screen is really on the right side, this is basically the open rack power architecture, right? So you can see that it's, you have AC and DC rectifiers, you actually have DC batteries into the rack, and then your machine is the DC machine. And then on the left side, which is a very traditional way of doing power delivery, so if you go to the industry world and you know you you look at the off the shelf power the the machine and system they often design the system with the ac and dc psu so the the interface is ac uh, and then the whole you know rack power distribution is using ac and they actually have very broad offering in terms of uh, you know machine and system right and um and in as a data center application, you know, you need the battery somewhere, right? Whether it's in the rack or in the building. So often on the left side, the traditional power delivery, you will basically need a building over ACPSU. I think that's, that's it's worth to call that one out. Um, so on, on the right side, which is the DC power distribution system. So the idea here is actually how we can onboard easily the AC machine, which is showing on the left side in the rack into a DC uh, power system, which is showing on the right side, right? That is the kind of the open rack uh, system. So that, that is the idea. And then, you know, why we are talking about this and, you know, what is the motivation? So really, as a data center consumer like Google, so we actually see that many cases, we need to go out and, and buy a, you know, off-the-shelf system. And um, instead of changing the, because they're designed with different power architectures, right? So instead of changing your, or manage the different, manage the different power architectures in, in your data center, which could be very disruptive, we actually trying to see is there a good way to, you know, create a, a incremental uh, migration path to onboard this AC machine into the open rack, right? So uh, we are talking about, you know, fast implementation of, a much broader range of you know, machine and assistant. Right? So that is really the motivation and why we are, we are talking about uh, this. And this is really a very high level of concept. So on the top side is basically, this is also a process how you know, OCP vendors is doing their machine and system design, right? So they basically have, the good news here is they basically have a very kind of decoupled assist, uh, power supply in their system so that when they 
they you know trying to try to generate a system OTS system they have uh, they're using you know pretty much um, most of them are using industry standard uh, AC DC PSU right so when they generate a system they integrate the AC PSU into the system and, and then this is a kind of design for the you know AC distribution system right so the idea here is if we can come out with the idea of doing a you know, 48 volt to 12 volt conversion and make it mechanically identical to the, you know, standard ACPSU. So you basically can swap out the ACPSU and, and integrate the DC, you know, PDB, we call the power distribution box into the system. So by doing this, you basically have one system design, but, you know, you can actually make it into two different power architecture, right? So that is the whole idea here. Um, and of course, we're talking about you know what what, what the success uh, looks like. The good news here is, uh, as a you know a, a power architecture, especially on the DC side, we have very good understanding of what is the requirement, right? So um, we just want to make sure we just have the enough features so that we can you know get a very cost-effective solution and make sure we have a, a faster time to market uh, approach here. So we are talking about you know, what is the DC input range? What is the redundancy looks like? Uh, since in, in the DC distribution system, we already have N plus one in the rack level. So do we really need to do N plus N uh, redundancy or we just need to do N plus zero redundancy on the trade level, right? So um, this is some, some of the features that um, uh, as a spec, we are going to contribute to OCP uh, this year. Um, so people understand, you know, what is really the requirement. Um, and call to actions, so as, as, as I mentioned, so as an OCP consumer, we see this as, uh, you know, there are many cases for us, uh, but we also see as uh, OCP vendors, right, if let's say you come out with, you know, you, you club, you're engaging into this design, it's actually open a lot of opportunity for you to, to do a you know, common design, a common system design, but you actually open more opportunities for you to sell into, you know, two different power architectures, right? So we also see that kind of interest there for OCP vendors to get engaged. Um, and as a plan for us, we actually had a, have a plan to collaborate with OCB vendors to um, you know, release the spec and also the design files into OCP, uh, hopefully in the second half of 2019. Uh, with that, I'm going to turn out to, uh, to Shai to talk about the 48-volt onboard power updates. Thank you. Uh, so my name is Shuai. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, some updates of the Google onboard 48 volt power solutions. So uh, if we look back a couple of years ago in 2016 when we first announced to join uh, OCP at that time, we didn't have many uh, 48 volt power solutions available. So since then we've been uh, spending a lot of uh, engineering efforts with our uh, industry partners and vendors to develop um, the 48 volt onboard solutions and continue to advance it. And we came up with a strategy of two stage. So basically we can uh, leverage a lot uh, from the 12 volt um, power solutions in the industry available for the second stage. And then we can focus ourselves to advance the first stage to uh, develop more TCO effective uh, power uh, DC to DC solutions. So this slide shows there's a two typical uh, application scenarios. And we, we see that two-stage strategy fit very well for these uh, two scenarios. The first one is uh, when you buy the off-the-shelf 12-volt server, you can uh, develop a 48-volt to 12-volt regulated uh, power distribution board to interface the 48-volt rack with um, um, the 12-volt uh, off-the-shelf machine. And the second is, um, um, if we have a 48 volt uh, powered in, uh, motherboard, we have all this um, 48 volt uh, DC to DC uh, uh, converters onto the motherboard. So we found that there are um, two fundamental categories of topologies that are very attractive um, to serve for the first stage. So one is the 48 volt to 12 volt hybrid converter solutions, uh, and that can be used to power uh, the 12 volt workloads such as PCIe's uh, disks off the shelf servers. And the second one is the, the fixed ratio converters 
they can be used to power the, a more demanding CPU load. So uh, this slide shows some uh, updates on this 48 volt to 12 volt hybrid converter solutions. We've been working with our vendors to develop uh, a couple of uh, topologies and qualify these topologies already. Um, so they are basically a, a hybrid mix of uh, switch capacitor converters with um, buck converters. So you can get uh, the, um, the high efficiency and density advantage out of this uh, switch capacitor. And also you get the uh, regulation capability uh, from this uh, buck inductor. So you can do the frequency of the PWM modulation. So, the, um, so one advantage of this uh, solution is you can, uh, it's a uh, high efficiency and very good density. You can put them directly onto the motherboard. So it gives you 97 to 98% efficiency for the uh, uh, regulation. So on the left side, it's a, um, it's a server design we did. Uh, we use this for four cell uh, generation one, uh, 1 1.2 kilowatt hybrid converter to power our PCIe load. And then after we uh, continue to improve it and um, improve the cost and, and, and density by reducing um, a lot of capacitors out of this uh, converter and also um, get the magnetics uh, shrinked by using couple inductor techniques. So another uh, category is um, the fixed ratio converter. So we can use, uh, for example, we can use the STC converter on the uh, right top corner. Um, this uh, STC we de developed a couple of years ago. Um, it can be used to do very high efficiency and density conversion for uh, about uh, four to one to six to one ratio. And if you get, uh, high, want to get higher ratio for more power demanding CPU load, you can use the LLC converter to do eight to one or to 12 to one. So the, um, the picture on the left shows um, um, that the real server design we did. Uh, using this two-stage approach. The first stage is um, using the generation one STC with the discrete uh, controllers, drivers, and caps. And, and now we have already have this uh, second generation STC available. We've got uh, uh, capacitor reductions. Uh, we've got the integration of the, fa uh, the, the controller and drivers. So this gives us another step forward uh, with more density and efficiency as well. So the fixed ratio converters typically offers you uh, 98 to 99% efficiency, and it gives you the advantage of uh, a high transient performance as well, and also a very high peak to average power ratio. So it's, it's very suitable for powering uh, the um, CPUs that has the turbo mode or boost mode, performance boost mode. So, in addition to these updates, we also will look at the continuous uh, challenges of the, like the power delivery for uh, high, po high performance uh, computing ASICs. So now we are seeing uh, there's a higher power density required for this uh, ASICs and the current uh, is approaching 1,000 amps. Um, we need to address multiple issues because of the high power, the noise budget, we want to maintain the same. So the impedance of the power delivery have to be maintained very low. And we want to drive the solution closer to the, um, to, to the ASICs um, as close as possible. And also electro migration limits of these uh, ASICs becomes also a, um, a challenge. So we want to call to actions uh, from the industry that we want to see a more higher power density, uh, multi megahertz VRs with high bandwidth. A faster power delivery response to address the high DIDT challenges, and also uh, 3D system integration, um, development of the powertrain, uh, and decaps for the VR modules. And that's all from our presentation. Thank you.